I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby here with Al Goff and Miles Miller, executive producers, writers, and showrunners for the new series Wednesday on Netflix. It stars Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams, a high school student at Nevermore Academy, where there's all sorts of supernatural activity and a murder mystery at the school. It's such a fun show, you guys. You teamed up with the great Tim Burton, and he directs the first four episodes. How did that conversation just even get started to bring back the Adams family and make this focus on Wednesday? Well, Miles and I, and it's been, you know, three and a half years. So uh, Miles and I had this idea in the spring of 2019. And just the, we were looking for an, a, an iconic character and how do we, you know, who's somebody that we haven't seen on television, who's somebody that's interesting and how can we tell a chapter in their lives? I mean, kind of what we did with Smallville. And we landed on Wednesday Adams, and then it took us a while to track down who actually controlled the rights. And it was MGM because they were making the animated films at the time. And we pitched the idea to uh, Steve Stark, who was then the, the president of, of production there. And he loved it and put us in touch with the, uh, the rights holder, the person who runs the Adams estate, which is a gentleman by the name of Kevin Mizraki who also loved it because he, he liked the idea that it was, it hewed more to the Charles Adams um, ethos more so than the animated films. And again, Wednesday is, it was always our favorite character. So, you know, we wanted to really, how could we explore that character? Anyway, we, we uh, then came up with the, the series document and then wrote the first episode. And then of course the pandemic hit um, and MGM, basically paid for a writer's room. So that's what we, so we broke out about, you know, we broke out the, the eight episodes. Um, and around May of 2020 is when the Tim Burton piece came in, which is Miles and I always wanted Tim for this. We thought he's the perfect director. He's just feels like it's, it's a match made in heaven. And of course we're told Tim's never done television. He's in, you know, in the 20 plus years, you know, he's, he's been repped at William Morris, like nobody's ever, he's never been able to do it. Well, we said, well, if you don't ask the answers, no. So we sent the script to his agent who read it and liked it and sent it to Tim. And we just kept on working, thinking, okay, we, we've, we've thrown it out into the universe. You know, we'll see what happens. And then literally four days later, the universe answered. And we got a text that Tim read the script. He loved it. It really spoke to him. And he wanted to get on a, a call and talk to us about it. And so they sent us Tim's number and we FaceTimed him. And there he was in London in his backyard with the dinosaur topiary behind him. So it was very on brand for Tim Burton. <laughs> and we had a great conversation and he basically committed to doing the, the series right then. And he wanted to do, you know, we thought, oh, he'll do the pilot. And he's like, I want to do all of them. And then logistically that, just wasn't able to work so he was so he did the first four but he was with us the entire time in we shot the show in Bucharest Romania and he was with us the entire time and has been a just a fantastic uh partner and Miles talk about Jenna Ortega um she takes on the role she called it the most demanding role of her career I mean she's she hasn't had a long career but I mean she's definitely one of the biggest stars on the rise she's fantastic what made her so perfect for this and, and brought her on board? Yeah, well, she's she's not wrong. It's an incredibly demanding role. I mean, she's in like 95% of the, of the episodes and it's it's all about her. And when we sat with Tim, it was like the three of us agreed. It's unless we find the right Wednesday, there's no show. So the search for Wednesday was really our primary focus for months. And we saw hundreds of actresses. And even though Jenna actually was on our radar almost immediately you know we really wanted to do a deep dive and make sure that we really found the right Wednesday but Al and I actually did a zoom with Jenna she was making X in New Zealand and she'd been up all night you know, running around the woods but yet when she read the scene it was just like magic so we called Tim as soon as we hung up with Jenna and said this is we think we found her and then he met with her we met with her together and he was just she just possessed the role. I mean, she was not only visually perfect, but just had the right attitude. She had the intelligence, the uh, in incredible sense of who Wednesday is and bringing something very different to it as well. I mean, she's, we had a lunch with her and she talked about how she was working on the, on the posture of the character and everything about 
Jenna really, in terms of the professionalism and what she brought to it and just the, it's like running a marathon, this, this, this show and particularly doing it in Romania. I mean, it, it was, it's difficult to describe because the show is so breezy and fun, but it was a pretty brutal shoot uh, in the middle of the pandemic. We had halfway through the war in Ukraine happening in uh, neighboring Ukraine. So it was just, it was very difficult in terms of the, the production, but she stepped up in every single way. And I think the show is a tribute to her in every way. And the supporting cast is also incredible. You've got Oscar winner, Catherine Zeta-Jones as Morticia, and Luis Guzman as Gomez, Fred Armisen as Uncle Fester. How did you pull in so many great actors for these limited roles on this series? Well, <laughs> we got, I'll say there's two words we pulled them in, Tim Burton. Um, <laughs> but that's not true. And it's also because, as I would say, it's like, it's because it's the Adams family as well. It, it's, I think people, there is a deep well of affection for these characters and this, uh, the legacy of the Adams family, sort of, it speaks to every generation. And I think all the actors had stories about how they loved different versions of the Adams family and, and the privilege of being able to, to take on those roles and those sort of the iconic roles of the Adams family. So it was, it was actually easier than we thought because of, and that really helped because of Tim was on board as directing. And it's a very Tim Burton world. You know, any Tim Burton fans, you will not be disappointed. The production is just top notch. It's dark and mysterious. Um, you mentioned Romania. Can you talk a little bit more about, you know, where this was filmed and how that was all built, that whole Nevermore production? Well, we, um, when we were looking where we were going to shoot the show, you know, we, we looked all over. And at one point we thought, oh, we're going to go to Canada. But the real signature of, of a Tim Burton project is um, is actually the production design and the sets. And so that is what we, you know, we had to find a place that could really accommodate that. And Romania really gave us everything we needed in terms of the large uh, studio space to build these sets. Um, and also it actually kind of looks like New England. If you, if you drew a line from sort of the northeast of America across the map, like latitude, longitude, you know, Romania is there. So it actually, um, it gave us that look as well. Um, and then as Miles said, there's just, but there's something slightly off about Romania. And the fact that we were shooting the Wednesday Adam show adjacent to Transylvania somehow felt perfect. <laughs> yeah. And there's a fun addition, the OG Wednesday Adams from the 90s. Christina Ricci, the one I grew up watching, she's there to play dorm mother, Miss Thornhill at Nevermore. And that's just the type of casting that makes, you know, it brings in another generation and makes people smile. Whose brilliant choice was that? Well, I think, honestly, collectively, we all wanted her in the show. Tim, Tim had worked with her in Sleepy Hollow. Um, you know, Miles and I wanted to, to sort of honor those 90s movies and, and felt if we could, if we could get her to be in the show, that would be a real coup. And, you know, it was, it was quite a, um, you know, scheduling wise, it was crazy because of uh, Yellow Jackets and just again, we're in Romania and pandemic, but. Um, and she just had a baby. And she just had a baby. And, but she, you know, she got, you know, we, we talked to her, Tim talked to her, we sent her the scripts. She, again, she really kind of loved that this was a chapter that hadn't been told before. It was, you know, it wasn't, a, it's not, wasn't watching a version of what she did again. It was a whole different chapter. And she, I think she really loved that. And she, you know, loved the, you know, the Adams family. And so when she jumped in, we felt it really gave the show a kind of stamp of approval that you're, that you're always hoping for. And Miles, I feel like I just keep name dropping, but there's so many great things happening in this show. <laughs> But you've got Danny Elfman now, four-time Oscar nominee, Emmy winner, Danny Elfman, um, producing the theme music and part of the score. Talk about that and how much the music brings into a production. You know, how important is that to have the right music, especially for something like this? Well, I think the music of a show is essential. And I think we always like classic filmic music rather than just sort of drones that's music that's very distinctive to a show and, and Danny is a master of that. And the thing is, you know, when you work with Tim, Danny and his costume designer Colleen Atwood sort of come with him in, in many, many ways. So 
I think you, you can't really do a Tim Burton show without Danny and Colleen. And they bring so much to, uh, like it's Colleen's, Tim's collective memory is with those two. So I think we had the joy of watching Danny work and create the iconic theme and, and play with the sort of original original sounds and orchestration of the original uh, Adam's Family TV show, but actually make something completely original and new. And I think it really adds a cinematic quality to the show that is often missing in television. And I think that's something that makes the show distinctive. And, you know, I think it's just, if you, if you watch the episodes, there are distinct themes for every character, for relationships, for moments. So I think it really adds a whole different texture and layer to the show. And can you talk about just the writing of this series? It has this dark, sarcastic wit that we love about Wednesday. And there's also this fantasy, um, mysterious uh, element about the whole thing. How long did that process take for you? And, and what's that like for you two to, to work together? You've been doing, you've been partnering together for quite some time. Decades. Decades. <laughs> Um, it was, it was actually, once we sort of came on the idea, um, you know, like I said before, of Teenage Wednesday Adams and boarding school, it was, how do you tell this chapter? And, you know, initially, you know, the thought is, oh, do you put Wednesday in a regular school and see how that goes? And that suddenly to us, it didn't feel, it felt like that was a one joke gag, which we frankly do at the, in the beginning of the very first episode. And then, um, we wanted also to have a show that while she's the center and the family isn't really around her, they're there for a couple of episodes. We wanted the show to still feel like you're in the world of the Adams family. And so we came up with the idea for Nevermore Academy, you know, because in the, which is all, all about outcasts. Because if you go back and look at the original Charles Adams uh, cartoons, there's a lot of other characters in there. So we're like, oh, this is interesting. Like you have the Adamses, but then you have all of these other people and how do they sort of fit into the world? And so that's how we came up with the idea for Nevermore, which again, has kind of the creaky, gothic, spooky, kooky feeling of, of, the Adam, of what, what used to be the Adams Family house. So now it's sort of a bigger version um, of that. And you really get to see her world expand. But in terms of the writing, it was very, you know, it was, we were sort of, it's a, we like to have a, a like a, I call it a tonal smorgasbord in the show, where it's, it's funny, it's funny, when it's sad, it's sad, when it's scary, it's scary. So it's just constantly shifting. And I think an audience can enjoy that, those shifts as well. So the, the tone is, it's just a darkly sarcastic and, but I think it's also, I think hopefully deeply emotional at the end of the series that you'll that you'll and the challenge of the writers is to how do you how do you make a character like Wednesday who's so seemingly unemotional and how do you make her move the dial just a little bit in terms of her character arc and that's the challenge of a character like Wednesday because you want to keep the purity of her because you don't want to she's not suddenly going to be going to be coming you know wearing purple and dyeing her hair orange she's always going to be Wednesday Adams. So it's like, it's, that was the real challenge. Like, how do we add and make an audience empathize and want to follow her journey? Because in many ways, she's sort of deeply unpleasant and um, self-centered and all those things, but she's also fearless. I think that's something that, and speaks her mind. And I think in this day and age, that's something that's very appealing and aspirational for people. And I think you do a really great job in this series of, you also kind of give a, a short backstory of why she is the way that she is, which is which was smart. Um, in terms of the dynamic between the, you two, how does that process go? Are you working on everything together? Are you like, I'll take this scene, I'll take this scene, or are you just fighting the whole time? What's the, what's the process? We've, we've been writing together now for 28 years. And I, I can't say we've ever had a fight per se. Now, you know, we, we, we started out, we met at film school at USC. We've always been friends. We've always had very similar tastes though, as, as the writing partnerships evolved, which is good is we, especially when you're show running, there's certain aspects of it that, that miles is better at than me. So it's, it's nice that we can, that we can sort of cover each other's 
blind spots. And then in terms of the writing, it, you know, it started out, we used to write together in the same room every day, like nine to six. Um, and, and we really, you know, especially early on, we really treated it like a, like a job, like you had to go and you had to do it. And I think as it's, as it's evolved and now, of course, with the pandemic and, you know, the last time we had one show in New Zealand and one show in Ireland is, is we, I think the, our writing process has, has evolved as well. So it's, I mean, it's really evolved because I used to write on legal pads and now I write on an iPad. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> was the two of you, was your first break into the business together or did one sort of break first and, and pull the other one in or how did, what happened? No, uh, our first break was that we're in our final semester at USC Film School. It was a different era and we sold a spec script we'd written. And that was sort of the, the golden era of spec scripts. And so we made enough money on that first sale. The movie never got made. It was called Mango. We sold it to New Line to actually, we didn't have to get jobs or work at cafes and be waiters. We actually could write full time. So it was sort of a, really a gift at that point in our lives where we could really learn how to write. Um, so we just, as Al said, it was like clocking in every day and really honing the craft of writing for all, you know three years. And we sort of broke into TV and and movies at the sort of the same time after that. But it was it was definitely a different era where we, we could really have that chance to, to learn how to write really. And I'm not spoiling anything because this is in the trailer, um, but just as a last question, one of my favorite moments is, you know, she gets sent to boarding school because she, she sets piranhas loose in a swimming pool on the water polo team that bullied her brother. Um, and, her, and Morticia says, you know, you could have been charged with attempted murder. How would that look on your record? And she was mortified and she, she was like, they would know I failed. Um, that's my kind of humor. Uh, do, you, do either of you have a favorite line? or anything that wouldn't give too much away that you can remember off the top of your head about uh, from this series? Um, I think mine is, again, it's also in the, it's in the first episode when she first meets Enid and they're talking about emojis. And she goes, when I look at you, I have three, yeah, three emojis good. come to come to mind. Rope, shuffle, hole. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was, because especially when you're writing the first script and you're really trying to find the voice. And when you have a couple of those, that, that attempt to murder line, absolutely. So once you have a, a few of those footholds, you're like, okay, now we're really honing in on her voice. So that, that was, for me, that was one. I love that. Miles, anything from you? Well, I like there's a great, there's a, just a real throwaway moment where she's in the cafe and she talks about uh, coffee in terms of the, what is it, what is it, Al? I, can't, I can't forget the line, but it's like, it's, it's a, she, she sees a guy, she, she talks about how coffee is like, weak coffee is, is, is the death. And then she sees a guy pouring himself a cup of weak coffee and he's so embarrassed he leaves. It's just a total like throwaway, but it's, it's, it's so hard. <laughs> Well, this was so much fun. It's not even out yet. And um, it's heating up in our prediction center over at Gold Derby for the Golden Globes and all the other awards. So to our viewers watching this, head over to Gold Derby, make your Golden Globe predictions, SAG Awards, um, Oscars, Grammys, all the other award shows, and Ellen and Miles. Truly a pleasure to talk with you about Wednesday, which premieres November 23rd on Netflix. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.